In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top-ranked fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we're number one. We talk about fitness and health. We answer people's questions, uh, but the way we opened the episode was with an introductory portion where we talk about current events, uh, we talk about scientific studies, uh, we talk about uh, each other. Mm. So we have a lot of fun in this episode. I'm going to give you a breakdown. By the way, if you want to go through the episode and see the topics time-stamped so you can fast-forward to your favorite parts, go to mindpumppodcast.com. So the intro portion lasted 49 minutes. Here's what went down in today's episode. We start out by talking about deep sea goat's milk. This is a scent by mm. Dr. Squatch. Amazing soap. They make products that smell incredible and are all natural. And yeah, that was a real scent. Yeah. It's one of my favorite ones. Manly scents. You got to check it out. Um, and because you listen to Mind Pump, you'll actually get a massive discount. So here's what you got to do. Go to drsquatch.com forward slash mind pump. That's D-R-S-Q-U-A-T-C-H dot com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump. Get 20% off the entire site. Then we talked about the CDC updating their, their website page, uh, showing that only 6% of people who died from COVID died just from COVID. Everybody else had at least two to three comorbidities, and this is causing a, a big hubbub Ooh, right now. Groundbreaking news. Yep. Then we talk about Justin being able to go home. Excellent. Uh, he's no longer evacuated from his home. They're safe, and they are there. Oh, thank you. Feels so good. Then we talk about Cobra Kai. This is the show on Netflix. It kind of follows the lives of Johnny uh, and uh, daniel son yeah. uh, after Karate Kid. It's really good. It'll give you the feels. It gives me the feels the whole time. Then I talk about my back pain. I hurt my back squatting super lightweight. Is it because I'm old? Maybe. Hmm. Um, but I did use red light therapy on my back, and it did help. Now, red light therapy can help muscles recover. It gets your skin to produce more ATP through its mitochondria. That means your skin will look younger. It's proven to reduce the appearance of stretch marks and wrinkles. It actually helps regrow hair on people who've lost hair. I'm not making this up. You can look it up yourself. This is all backed by scientific study. Now, the, the problem is there are a lot of red light companies out there, and they're not using the same red lights that are used in studies. Now, Juve uses the best red light panels you'll find anywhere. These are the ones that they actually use in studies, so they are legitimate. Um, and because you listen to Mind Pump, you will get uh, some hookups. So here's what you do. Go to juve.com, J-O-O-V-V.com forward slash mind pump. And any order over $500 uh, will get a free MAPS Prime program. Just use the code mind pump. Then I talk about uh, a pastime that I've uh, rekindled these days. Tro trolling social media for fun. It's a good time to do it. Election year is a great time <laughs> to poke at people. Yeah. Then we talked about the Bill and Ted uh, adventure new movie that's out. I guess it's pretty good. That's what uh, Justin said. It is good. I'm going to check that out. And then I talked about the ultrasound, the 3D ultrasound we did uh, on my baby. They are adorable. Thank God they look like their mother. Um, and I guess the gender. We don't know the gender, but I guess it uh, based off some of the comments mm. uh, that the, the doctor was uh, was giving us while they're doing the ultrasound. That was 49 minutes. Then we got into the questions. So here's the first one that we answered. This, was, this person wants us to sh share success stories of how we've helped really overweight people. So if you have a lot of weight to lose and you want to hear our strategies that actually worked long term, don't miss that part of the episode. The next question, this person wants to know if creatine is a good supplement for women. The third question, this person wants to know how we deal with anxiety. So we talk about physical and mental anxiety. And the final question, this one's for, from a trainer. They want to know how we kept ourselves from getting burnt out when we trained lots of clients. And it's t-shirt time. Ah, oh, shit, Doug. You know it's my favorite time of the week. So this week we had a lot of reviews. We have four winners for Apple Podcasts, five winners for Facebook. The Apple Podcast winners are Pat Joyce, Chamu217, Sound Spirit, and Casual Mo Movie Watcher. For Facebook, we have Oliver Gregoric, Tyler McIntyre, Cam Plants, Danny Nurmi, and Jeff Ferguson. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. That's a lot of names, Doug. That is for sure. And include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. 
So I was thinking over the weekend, you guys, I had a few ideas that I wanted to pitch to Dr. Squatch in terms of, you know, bringing up their manly sense a little bit. So I was thinking, you know, the the nice scent of the diesel fuel car exhaust. No, that's, uh, that's totally a man smell. That's yeah, dad. fresh mowed lawn. <laughs> I was thinking like WD-40, maybe sawdust and bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> you know, something like that. Like, you know, something I could get behind. Those, are, you those, those are manly smells for sure. Yeah. 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 Folgers coffee in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be Folgers. It can't be yeah. like a good. When I th- when I think of like m- like smells, and I think of my dad, I think of like uh, like he used to wear this this cologne. It was terrible. Was it Brute? No, oh, dude. My dad loved Brute. Did he like was, Brute? Yeah, dude. Yeah. No, my dad get got this. I don't remember what it was called, but it was like a, a cologne, and it was in the shape of like a pine tree. Oh yeah. And I think my mom told him once. That she liked it. That was it. That's all it takes. Yeah, you just <laughs> spray it on. Yeah. One time when I was a kid, I sprayed it on my face and it burned my skin. I'm like, what is this? Because <laughs> if it was up to us for what we actually like to smell, <laughs> you know, it'd be a totally different thing. Yeah, bacon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rub some bacon. Yeah, who doesn't like this? Hey, Come all on, jo- honey. All joking aside, uh, their their deep sea goat milk. By the way, it's a funny name for so. Smells so good. Oh, they have. Yeah. They have a name now. I didn't know that one. Deep sea goat milk. I, I wash myself with it, and Jessica's immediately glued to me. Uh. Just her, she puts her nose <laughs> on me and just smells me the whole they time. They actually have a, a cologne called Beechwood Bourbon. I, I just realized, it, which I have to try that. Yeah, yeah. You know the th- you know colognes are uh, or smells. They invoke feeling. They invoke uh, memory a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but I'm always left like every time I see something that's like for men, and I use it. No, yeah. this doesn't. It just smells like, you know, I don't know, peppermint, sweet, or something like that. It never smells. Never gets me excited, right? You yeah, know what I mean, yeah, it always says like kind of real like a, masculine smells. Flowery. Get you excited is how you're alluding yeah, to right like, now. I want to smell good. <laughs> like, I don't want to smell like potpourri. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's let's man it up a little bit. I want to smell good, but I want Jessica to also smell me and be like, "Oh my God, he's so masculine, so yeah. strong." Yeah, he has an essence about him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Meanwhile, you got that gorgeous wig on you. You like that? I yeah. know. Oh, it's it, 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 it low key is distracting. It's yeah. uh, I'm celebrating. You know why I'm wearing the so for people who are not watching us on YouTube. I'm wearing a white, uh, like one of the one of the wigs like our forefathers, like a powder yeah. wig. Yeah, nice, nice. Uh, this is back when uh, putting your hair in a ponytail was actually yeah. cool. Yeah, and uh, it's to celebrate the shirt, dude, that we came out with. I like that, dude. This was I, I love fitness. I love freedom. You yeah. like that? Yeah, this is, yeah it's got this, this is. Uh, I inspired this a little bit, right? Because I was talking about this kind of stuff. So it's yeah. a, it's a fitness and freedom shirt with a nice American flag on it. I like that. Yeah. Available right now at the on the mind. Wasn't that because of syphilis? Page. What? The wigs. Huh? What? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Yes. You did tell me something. Okay, tell me about this. Yeah, so basically back then syphilis, like one of the symptoms, I guess you lose your hair and like stuff, you know, happens to, to your skin, your body, all that kind of stuff. And so they would start wearing these wigs and it became like a fashion thing. And oh, then, no and then way. That, that, yeah, and then they just try to keep the tradition of wearing those wigs. Uh, but it really started from uh, the syphilis. So they all epidemic. had. They were all just a bunch of uh, yeah, yeah, bunch, filthy pigs. Bunch of sex freaks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, a bunch that's of, our forefathers. Right a bunch there. Of, yeah. That's why they walked funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with, with wooden teeth, dude. Yeah. You guys, my this. I don't know why this reminded me of this, but I had this conversation with Jessica over the weekend that shattered my world. Mm. Like literally, shattered everything. So we were sitting on the couch and we were just having a good time talking about like clients who've trained and laughing about certain things. And you guys know that the, definitely the back half of my career, I trained a lot of people in advanced age. You know, advanced age, uh, I would consider it over the age of 60. Um, I love that term. I know. Advanced. It's exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's better than saying old, right? Pinnacle. So I trained a lot of people and we were talking about that and, I, and, we, and then we were talking about farts. And I said, yeah, dude. I said, man, I trained... Some of these older uh, people, they would fart during the workouts because they couldn't control yeah, yeah, themselves, yeah. and they'd do a squat and pfft, you know they fart every time. Leg yeah. press gets them every time. Yeah, yeah, right. and and she laughed and she's like, "Oh she's yeah, good push." Yeah, yeah, she's like, "If you're," she's like, "If you train a client for longer than a month, you're gonna hear them fart." I'm like, "Absolutely." And then I told the story of I love this woman. I will not say her name because I will not call her out. Uh, but uh, there was this woman I trained in her 80s, so she was in her mid 80s. She was by the she was one of the oldest people I'd ever trained, mm-hmm. and. Every single t- we used to one of the exercises that we worked up to because of her age and she was deconditioned was to just sit down and stand up off of the bench and we worked different levels. Eventually, I got her to sit all the way down on a bench and stand up, and that was one of the fundamental exercises we did. Yeah, 
but she if we did a set, let's say we did a set of, you know, 8 to 10 reps, that's usually what we would do. She would fart at least 3 or 4 times during that set, every set. Wow. So every set she would come up and you'd hear and she'd come back and she and I told Jessica it's like, man, she couldn't control her, you know, her body, you know, she just would fart all the time and whatever, it wasn't a big deal, I didn't make a big deal about it. And she looks at me and she goes, because she, now remember, Jessica, Jessica used to work in, in medical offices, so she knows a few things. And she goes, that wasn't a fart, Sal. I'm, what? Like, I'm, I'm like, what? What? She goes, yeah, she's an older woman. Yeah. She was uh, queefing. What? <laughs> like, yes. like the same audible power? She's like, because of the weak pelvic floor muscles and all that stuff, sitting down and standing up, there, and she was doing it that much. She goes, that wasn't gas. The reason why it happened so frequently is because- Air? What? She queefed. Really? Uh. Yes, dude. Bro, it my my the whole world, everything exploded <laughs> all at once because I remember that this memory was like a you know a thing about this woman I trained, yeah, not realizing that she was queefing yeah, the was whole time from a totally different. Yeah. Name. Really, every time she that's a thing. That's what I said. I didn't even know that. Neither did I. What? Wow. Could you imagine? Put put yourself in my shoes. Yeah, I <laughs> thought that this woman was farting every time. Yeah, it wasn't that. And you compliment her and say good push. It yeah, was yeah. it was queefing. <laughs> Wow. wow! I did not. I did not know that. Couldn't sleep, dude. That's new. To, that's new to me. <laughs> yeah. Wow! Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. Apparently, Jess could drop in knowledge. That's powerful, right there. <laughs> no, it's not, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. way worse. <laughs> yeah, than a fart. Yeah, that's terrible. I, I got something that it seems like nobody wants to talk about that I want to bring up. Uh -oh. Uh, oh, oh, is it worse than my queef story? Yeah, maybe. I don't. Well, yeah, probably. <laughs> Sorry, I everybody. Mean, it was be queef. Probably offend everybody the same way. I guess uh, the CDC came out. Um, with new numbers, and doesn't seem like anyone's talking about oh, it. Oh, what do you mean? I want to talk about this. A lot of people are talking about it. Yeah. It's posted all over the place. Yeah. So basically what they did is they showed that going through the numbers, and this matches uh, like what they showed in Italy and in France and other countries, that a very small percentage of the deaths associated with uh, COVID-19, uh, a very small percentage of those people died who solely had COVID-19. Mm -hmm. The vast majority had, on average, and this is what uh, they showed in Italy, by the way, on average, two to three comorbidities. So cor comorbidities are health issues that can cause uh, complications or challenges. like um, That may lead to death. Like diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, dementia, cancer, like things that if you have these things and you get sick with Two anything, to three, yeah. it said. Two to three. 2.6 was the average. That's crazy. Yes. But, I mean, this is what we've been seeing in other countries, that if, you're, uh, if you have com comorbidities, your risk, and you're older – that's the other thing. A, a high, a very high percentage of the deaths are for people who are over the age of, I think it was sixty-five or seventy-five or something like that. So this is making a, like big news because now you have people who are saying that we overreacted with you know the shutdowns and that we caused a lot of problems and it's not uh, nearly as bad. Yeah, as let's start t that conversation. Yeah, you dude. know, like I, I think it's appropriate to start having that conversation now. Well, the way I look at it is, uh, you know, that's a different conversation. But the way I look at it is, uh, it, it's the same that I've always felt about every illness. You got to be, you, you have to have a healthy body and a healthy immune system. If you, yep. you can't rely on Western medicine to, to cure you. Um, it can never replace, uh, or any medicine can never replace just a healthy body. Mm hmm. Yeah, and you know? that's what it always comes back to speak to. I know I saw, I think it was Tim Kennedy posted a really good post about that. It's really like the answer is to try your best to, to stay as healthy as possible and to do all the practices, uh, you know, necessary to keep your body, uh, you know, as strong as possible, especially, you you know, your immune system and everything else. So that's just not a message. The preventative message has never been part of the conversation so far. No. And that's been so frustrating it for me. It feels like it's because it occurred during an election season that it was- Totally got politicized. It's politicized. Yes. So they're using it to, you know, one side's using it one way, the other side's using it using it uh, another way, which um, is a little sad. But here's the other thing. The whole world acted this way. Everybody. Yeah. You know, could, I don't know. Do you think that that's the argument when people say that? So when, when when you try and say it's political, then everyone's like, get the fuck out of here. It's not political because the entire world is reacting the same way. I, I mm. Could we potentially in the future look back and think that this was one of the greatest overreactions of mm -hmm. all time? Is that, gonna, is that a potential or do you think we'll look back and say... We behaved, you know, we did the right thing. No, yeah, I think there's always going to be the debate that 
the reason why it is, you know, they're they're as low as they are is because we we took all these precautions. I don't think you can ever win that argument. It's, a, it's it, a speculative one, right? Exactly. It and is. so I think that to say it's political, it, you're all, you're always going to have a you know a, a group or a large a large portion of people that will disagree with you and say it's not the mm -hmm. entire world did it. Everybody's not in on our election, so mm -hmm. that's a bunch of bullshit. And then when you start to debate numbers and we start to see that oh maybe it's not as bad as it was or what we expected it to be, then you're still going to have that large group of people that are going to tell you, tell you that yeah we'll thank God that we locked everything down and that's the reason why it's not as bad as what you you thought it was. Yeah, yeah. It's There's interesting. always going to be different perspectives around it. It's that's the thing. It's like you're arguing and debating something that was unknown, and now it's like going back and trying to retrace like how we should have done it better. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to still have a good well, solution. Well, one Western nation uh, did did not do mass shutdowns, and that's Sweden. And so you can look at Sweden's data and see how they behaved, what their infection rates look like, their death rates. Now, they did, if you compare them to their neighboring Nordic countries, they did have more uh, infections, mm -hmm. but the infections came down very quickly, um, and now they're seeing very little infections. And the, the way that the people in Sweden behaved, which I feel like we would have done the same thing, they were informed, and then people started to be responsible. And you started to see that already. Remember, right. before any any shutdowns were happening, you saw it was a huge reduction in people going to places like restaurants and to mass events. People were kind of starting to become more responsible. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know if we're ever, we're yeah, ever going to have a... I don't know if that's how the reaction we would have had either. I mean, when Sweden is what? what The size of Sweden? What, California size or yeah. smaller? Yeah, you know? but then they're also homogenous. Like everybody's exactly. the same. Yeah, they all the believe same, the same. Exactly. Yeah, strong community, sense same of community. Same political like, agenda. There's everything. so much division here, especially right now. I, I don't see that at all. I see the opposite. You know, I see people... I see one side being like, F you about it. I'm not going to do it. Then the other people being like, I yeah, can't like believe... Too hard on both ends. Yeah, like, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel that way. I don't think or anything like Sweden. Well, I, you know, I know that there's now a lot of pressure on states to open things back up. You're starting to see a lot of people Good. really push mm -hmm. push them in that direction. I, in my opinion, has been, you know, yeah. it's always been this. It's been inform and then allow free people to make those choices themselves and allow free businesses to choose yes. if they want to allow people in their business or not. And then, you know, because that's that's uh, that's how well, free society should be. I look at this as good news. You know, I know everybody might yeah. be like, yeah, like it might get uh, still like divisive in terms of like, well, we still need to lock everything down. And, yeah. you know, but I look at this as, as good news. Like there's not as many people dying, you know, so let's reevaluate now how to deal with this and maybe restructure things so that we can then move on and move forward. We don't have to look back and see how many fuck ups well, there were. Let's just move forward together. Well, here's my fear: um, is that because of the because of the fear surrounding this, that when a vaccine is introduced, I'm afraid that uh, that maybe some states or I don't even know if the federal government would do this, is make it mandatory to get the vaccine to do anything. Like if you want to fly, if you want to travel, if you want to cross state lines, yep, it's mandatory to get a vaccine. My fear around that is not because I'm afraid of the vaccine necessarily, although um, I'm always wary over a vaccine that took a year to make. Usually it's a 10-year process. Um, the, the part that I fear is the reaction you're going to get. I feel like that would get less people to want to get vaccinated because they feel mm -hmm. like they have to be forced. Right. So I'm wondering if that's going to be the – I hope not. Right. You know, how would you even control – what do you have, like a card or something that everybody has to like show before they get a plane ticket? Well, I tell you what, I flew this weekend and weird – yeah, bro. Oh, I it has to be what like a uh, flying when I flew. I flew out on Thursday. Yeah, Thursday, right? I think it was Thursday. Thursday I flew out, and then I came back on Saturday. And flying both days felt like what it must have felt like on a on a week, you know, middle of the week uh, day in the seventies or something. It was like a ghost town. I mean, I I took a picture at one point. Were you like by yourself on the plane? Well, yeah. They first of all, they don't see anybody next to each other. The only people that could be next to each other or people that are in the same group. So okay. husband and wife, if they were traveling together, they would put them together. But if you were by yourself, they you're, there's always at least a seat in between you and somebody else. Like I had nobody in my row. I had one person in, in front of me diagonally, and they kind of do it that way too. Mm. So they, they, they do a good job of, 
I just don't know how they they're managing. No that. lines when you're going into. Oh, yeah. nothing. I mean, nothing. The only, the only thing I, I loved it. I, so I, the, I traveled like not too long ago, and it uh, was so like easy. Oh, oh and it was quick. It was beyond yeah. easy. I mean, you guys know, like, what's one of the biggest nightmares for us when we travel is the uh, car rental. Mm. Yeah. And uh, you know, I was texting back and forth between Katrina. I landed over in Idaho, like it nine something at night and i'm like i'm ready to go home and go to the my hotel room or whatever and she's like well i hope i hope that because she always i always bitch about the car rental experience they take forever yeah it's just dinosaur age the way they do it everything else we do is so much fast right not like that anymore now i don't i know that uh i know jerry set us up for like the executive company thing or whatever Mm -hmm. like that but i literally walked up first of all there's no line so of course that sped things up but I walk right up. I get. I, I go up to the. Um, They're just happy to see a customer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's felt like that, right? Guy was. You want two cars? Three cars? Hey. Hey. Guy was super friendly, yeah. and uh, and I was like, oh, let me get my confirmation number. And he's like, oh, what's your last? As I'm reaching in my bag to get my confirmation number, I said, oh, Schaefer, and he and he like pulls me up before I can even get my card. He's like, oh, Adam. He's like, oh, okay, here we go. I have a BMW for you. Throws it over to me, and I go, uh, do I have to do anything else? He goes, no, you're all good. And I go, uh. Well, he goes, yeah, do you just go down the hall over here? You go out the, the main doors, yeah. your car's in that stall. And I go, do I need to go check with anyone else? He goes, no, you're good. <laughs> That's great. I swear to God it was that, <laughs> that like, easy. What? And then on my card or on my key thing, it said like stall B24, walk outside, find the stall, get in the car, take off. Wow. That was it. Hey, speaking like of magical, of good news, uh, Justin, yeah. you're back in your home? Yeah. How does dude. that feel? Oh, my God, you guys, you have no idea, dude. Like, I am so beyond words like it, us coming back to our house was like this enormous amount of stress just all of a sudden just like melted away you know like we we spent our entire weekend just working outside and like staying home i didn't uh, even leave dude we were, we were just like ah like it was like our house was hugging us you know <laughs> like i was just like sleepy i had the best sleep i've had in whole new appreciation huh Totally. I saw your post that you did with yeah. your boys. That was cool. Was yeah. There, now, did you see any, like, like was there any soot or ash or... Like, there was a lot, yeah. Inside the house, did it smell like smoke or was that... No, okay. actually, it wasn't too bad. Uh, it wasn't too bad. We weren't... Uh, I mean, we weren't, like, right next to the flames, so we didn't get quite as bad of the smoke. We did get some of the remnants. Uh, definitely our entire lot... Like it's like about a quarter acre mm-hmm. lot, so of like really you know dense like redwood uh, foliage and whatnot. So we were just out there, just just trimming and trying to. I don't know, man. I just felt so grateful that I could be there, just like you know appreciating my backyard and like you know the dogs actually have their own space. We all had our own space again. I think uh, it it just really got to us where we were just we were just all on top of each other. 24 mm. 7 like it's funny i didn't tell you guys so we stayed our last night in uh this the vrbo and we got lucky to get this place because uh first of all like he allowed dogs and i appreciate him for you know kind of sneak because he didn't normally do it but he allowed us to bring our dogs and he had like, like a granny unit in the back and this is somewhere in willow Glen. what he didn't tell us uh, was that the cow train goes right behind the backyard. <laughs> oh, no. and like, you have an elevator the first week, <laughs> yeah, this dude. week you got cow train going. Yeah, bro. <laughs> so we're back there, and it's just like, we're like, oh, this is cool, you know, like whatever. It's a nice little backyard set up, and then, nyer, nyer. <laughs> <laughs> and this happened till I don't know, like 12, at least it only went to like t- midnight, you know? Oh, like no. that, was, that was the bonus to that. <laughs> but uh, so then we got the orders that came out that, that, uh, you know, we were able to come back uh, to our house and we're like, we had a few di- you know, we had like a week still planned with this guy. And, and so we kind of, you know, we're like, Hey man, we're out, you know, like we're going home. Like we're not going to stay, but thank you. You know? And so we went back and just, did you break the deal then? And was it okay? Cause I would imagine you signed for longer. Right? Yeah. So we had to kind of negotiate, like, you know, he gave, basically gave like half of it back, okay. uh, which was really noble of him. Like he he could have just taken all of it, but uh, right, right. so it was nice of him. And, and so, yeah, dude, we, I mean, we got back. I honestly, like, I, I, I didn't even know what to do. I just sat there and was just like staring, you know, at, at the wall, staring at my backyard. And then we, me and Courtney, like we're puzzling. And then I was like, oh, it was almost like this weird, 
like cathartic. Uh, I just was like taking all of the stress and like kind of put it all back, all my pieces back together. You know, <laughs> it was like this weird metaphor. Like we just like put puzzles together all weekend. That was it. Dude, thank thank God for the the, the brave men and women that that were oh able my God, to stop so, that fire. I'm so appreciative, and, and it, from all over the place too, from like New York. They flew in people uh, in, and they brought people up from from L.A. From I heard out all, of the country. As I say, I heard only from Australia. Australia. I, I saw on our forum that somebody was saying that. Wow, really? Yeah, they kind of returned the favor for us flying out there to yeah. go help them out with the fires. That they sent people this way too. It's, wow, it, it, it was so humbling. Like it was like. Now, well, now yeah. do you know anybody in the neighborhood? Was everybody okay? Or were there some houses that were affected? Um, yeah, I do know some people that lost their homes. So, you know, that's that's sort of the bitter end of it where, you know, you're you're like, yeah, like you're so like elated and like, you know, grateful. And then you're just like, oh, my God, my heart, you know, goes out for those people that didn't have anything to come back to. But, you know, it's it definitely happened. Like there's there was over 700 homes, uh, you know, in, in our community. Uh, that were lost. So, mm. but that Boulder area was that that guy hit the hardest. Is that what Boulder and then up uh, like Empire Grade and like uh, over in Bonnie Dune and uh, kind of coming into Felton and yeah, Ben Loman. I know somebody who got, lost the house. So, oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and like one of my one of the camps I went to as a kid that I really like loved and I wanted my boys to go to completely ashes. Oh wow. The entire thing. And that, that was heartbreaking. What's that one state park that's over there with this really big old, basin. They're burned, right? All yeah. Now, the entire thing. Did oh, the big basin burn down? Yeah. yeah. Now, oh, wow. now hold on. Did the, cause they have some trees there that are like thousands of years old. Yeah. Did they get burned? Yeah. Oh but, yeah. But I, you know, a lot of the trees too, though, they, the thing about red was they burned on the inside. And so like the structure of the trees still there. So you're going to see a lot of like trees still standing, but like they're like burned through oh, and hollowed out. You, yeah. It's interesting. Do you know, I was watching, I was in one of my, uh, I love to get you anytime I get an opportunity. If I watch, I don't know about you guys, you guys have TV you watch when like the wife isn't around like the, the TV, that the one thing that Katrina and I don't like, she does not want to watch with me is the nature channel stuff. Mm-hmm. And I just love, that's like my, I, I love to get <laughs> high too, and dude. watch that stuff. Yeah. I will, I will I'm watch, with you on that. Yeah. I watched like a whole, like, I think 12 episodes the other day, like in a row, just sitting there watching the nature, nature channel. And it was, they did a uh, Chernobyl. They showed what oh, it looks yeah. like now. Did you see, have you seen what's going on? Um, this is really cool. Actually. I haven't seen this, but I've heard that like, is this the updated wildlife is coming. It? Yes. Yes. Uh. And it, and only a matter of, they said within like 10 years, if they showed this like photo, I mean, it's completely looks like a forest mm. now. I mean, because obviously, because now isn't it not safe to go there for like another thousand years? Yes. So, crazy? so, so completely no humans. We completely just eradicated the place. So with, I forget what the radius is of uh, what, it, but it was, it used to be butted up next to this, this, this rainforest. And because we've left, because humans have completely left. And even though it's unsafe for us to be there, the trees now and plants and like has just overgrown and growing in the buildings and taken over. And now it's like some of the most wild wildlife in the area have all migrated to now them. Now there's still hella radiation there. I know. It's crazy. I see. I feel like every, there's so many so potential the sci fi so, movies. Coming hundreds out. of years it'll still it's thousands. Rain. Thousands. Oh, thousands. thousands yeah. that, we, that they say it's unsafe. Wow. Yeah, I, for, are, are we going to make Godzilla or something out of there now? I don't know. But I, I mean, I, so, you know supposedly all the green Maybe. in the trees is supposed to be like canceling out some. Of that, that was what was really interesting. Was like how how uh, how strong and resilient wow. that the forest was to be able to come back in well, an area good. like that. Yeah, I just thought that was pretty cool. That's very good. Well, speaking of uh, of TV, I finally started watching Cobra Kai. Yeah, dude, bro, have you, you haven't I've seen been it. So I watched the first few episodes on YouTube when it came. So out. good, <clears throat> but I, I saw that it dropped on Netflix. Yeah. Now you said both seasons. So I didn't see both seasons. I only saw one. No, no, no both seasons full or on Netflix. Yes. Oh, that's weird, that's dude. Crazy. I they did such a so so Jessica's like oh, I hate this or whatever. Fine, don't watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's such a throwback Same. to everything from the original Karate Kid, the storyline. Well, they used this the main guys, dude. They weaved it in right, like like so masterfully. Like it, it, it still gave you the feels, which is really hard to do if you're trying to recreate like something dude, that you grew up with. So many feels. Yeah. Throughout the whole movie, there's 
there's, I mean, the whole excuse me, the whole like uh, series. You just every episode they'll do some kind of a throwback, and you're just like, like yes. the characters didn't change. You know, they still had that like, uh, you know, same mentality, but they were able to now kind of show how the mentalities differ it with the kids. Yep. And then how like oh, I just love that dynamic. Dude, Johnny, who was he's the, my favorite. He was the asshole bully. So what's yeah. interesting about Cobra Kai is that he has a completely different. Yeah, they reversed the rules. Per, no, he has a different perception of what happened. Oh, yes. like he's like this kid comes into town. Takes my girl, yep. sucker punches me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> three months later, puts a hose, sprays us with water, oh, yeah. and it's like, well, that kind of. And then you happen. see why he became an asshole too, like because his home, you know, like home life where he's got this dad that was like this total dick, you know, to him, and he's trying to escape and like trying to build himself up as this, you know, empower himself with with you know karate. And uh, it, it's just interesting because, like, you don't take his perspective. You just but only got it from Danny. He's hilarious, though, in the yeah. series. His character is so funny because he's so, like, not politically correct. Yeah. yeah. And such Unfiltered. A, but a likable – he's, like, a likable – uh, asshole. Yeah, and just says shit. And you're just like, well, I could. So. I thought the few episodes I watched, they did. They kind of reversed the roles, right? They make Johnny kind of like the the uh, the asshole now as an adult. They're and actually they, they go back and forth with it. They're okay. both likable. Watching it. Yeah, they're both flawed, both likable. Okay. Yeah, so you like them both, yeah. but Johnny's just hilarious mm. in the in the whole thing. I thought mm. they did a great job. I loved it, dude. Yeah, I, I can't wait to watch to, to finish the whole thing. Yeah. Anyway, so I uh, hurt my back Friday. Oh God! What did wow. you do that? Yeah, this is old Overreaching man, old man story. No, no, this is a, definitely an old man story. So I went light. This is not what happens normally. I went really light, and all I did was push the 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 depth a little bit, push the mobility a little bit. It was trying to work on my depth, on my squat, mm. and get control at the bottom or whatever. Trying to do all that, rack up the bar, and I'm like, huh, that feels. Funny, no pain though. But I'm like, okay, let's see what happens. It feels a little unstable. You get that feeling in your back where you're like, it just feels kind of unstable. Yeah, like something's a little off. Yeah, what's going on? Anyway, next morning I wake up and I'm like, this is. Ter- am I asking my pregnant wife to help me out of bed? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's going on, yeah. dude? I think it's my QL and my psoas that might be hurting. Uh huh. But yeah, dude, I'm just now. Even I know you weren't probably maxing out or going really heavy, but were you going heavy considering the depth? No, dude, I went hella light. Oh, wow. I had 135 on the bar. Oh, wow. And I'm playing with that's depth. That's sauce. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Were you distracted at all? Because that's what happened to me when I got hurt. No, dude, time. I'm bracing my core, uh, paying attention to my feet. I got my no hips. excuse for you then. I, yeah. yeah, trying to help you out right now. <laughs> I'm trying to throw you a <laughs> I have no idea what the hell is going on. It's very frustrating. But yeah. So yeah. all weekend, I'm doing these. You know, I'm trying to get out. It's like it's so embarrassing, too. I'm watching TV on the couch. I'm like, oh, I got to get up to go pee. So I got to like... Lift up one leg, you know, yeah. grab my leg, use my leg's momentum to... Huh? Damn, it had you that good, huh? Dude, uh, even wow. right now, I still feel it a little bit, but I, I do think it's those muscles because it's like it feels deep yeah. inside, but I don't know. But I did use the the Juve light, so I have one, and I don't injure myself often, and I did use it on my back, and it's deep. Now, here's the thing, right? It's a deep muscle. QL is way inside the body, so I'm mm-hmm. like, I don't know if this is going to help me or not. Um, it actually did. I had well, to, yeah, the Juve has both the near and the far infrared, right? Yeah, That's so I, designed to penetrate. I used it a couple times, and it did make a difference. Now, Jessica has been using it regularly to prevent stretch marks, and some of the side effects she's getting is her her skin is looking That's really, what really I, good. You, you feel like it's glowing. Yes. I noticed that. That's the biggest thing. I noticed my skin more than anything else. I know we, that we've talked about all the science that supports all the other benefits, but personally, and I think probably at all of us, I probably have used it the most because of my skin. Dude, it, it, I swear to God, you're, it takes like years off your skin in terms yeah. of the way it looks. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. pretty It's pretty it wild. It gives you this weird glow. It gives you a, like a glow, like almost like you, like when after you've been out in the sun like a couple days and you have like kind of a nice tan, that kind of glow look to you, it yes. gives you that kind of glow look. And then it, it's totally suppressed my psoriasis if I'm consistent totally. with it. Totally. But anyway, so because I was at uh, home and my back was kind of hurting, so I wasn't doing a lot of moving. Uh, I went back to an old uh, thing that I used to do back in the day for fun. I was on social media trolling people. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, what a good time that is. I get, yeah, every once in a while I love that. I, uh, yeah, no, he, he's more than I am. It's not a pastime yeah. for me. I think I got him started, right? I kind of started the, the fire with, with Sal on that, and he's like, oh, this is kind of well, cool. Well, dude, I'm going to tell yeah. you right now, election year is prime for trolling. <laughs> yeah. All you got to do yeah. is wait for a news post or article and go in there and just say be first to comment. Say something that couldn't be can be interpreted as inflammatory. You don't want to say anything crazy because it's, there's records out there. Mm. But you want to say something in a way that yeah. you know 
is going to piss people off and then just walk away. <laughs> just walk just, away. Just let it burn. And then, dude, an hour later, I see like 50 notifications and there's like people arguing underneath the comment that I, uh. <laughs> I did that like 100 times this weekend. <laughs> it was such a good time. Dude, yeah. There go. Like there was like a post on Trump. And so underneath it, I put, ah, Orange Man is bad. And I know that triggers people. You know, Orange like, Man is yeah, bad. That's like a thing that. <laughs> That's like a thing that assholes will say to trigger, you know, right, the right. left, for example. Right, right. And I get like a bunch of you know, arguing back and forth. It's a, good, <laughs> it's a good job, dude. Oh, wow. In fact, if you go on Instagram, if you, I think we, when you follow people, can't you follow the comments they put on other posts on Instagram? Can, isn't there a way to yeah, do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Someone can, can follow what, yeah, you can follow uh, what. Of course you can. Yeah, no, no. Well, Remember, I, that's how I got in trouble with the liking booty pics and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> that's how Adam. <laughs> that's how I found that out. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, Wait, how did that happen again? That. Was that Katrina's friend? Yeah, over? yeah. Katrina's. I was like, Katrina's friends would be like sending her post of like, you know, oh, Adam commented this on this girl's page and liked this or like that. And I was going, how the fuck does she know that? She's even Instagram. Uh, <laughs> I know, I'm sure Katrina's response was probably like, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. She, well, yeah, it uh, happens. That's the irony of all of it. Because like, I know we did that. She'd be like, yeah. hey, could you at least give me a heads up when you're going to do some of that <laughs> shit? So when my friends send it to me, I, I don't uh, have to act like I don't know already. So like I'm like, come on, man, are you kidding me right now? I'm like, yeah, tell your yeah. fucking weird friends to stop following yeah, everything yeah, I'm yeah. doing. You got to think yeah, ahead. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to leave comments. It's like this. This picture is immoral. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Even though you heart it, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But you still like it. <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. Uh, so Bill and Ted's. I, oh yeah, that came out. It came out. I, I almost it watched out. it, but Direct I didn't watch to it. TV. Was yeah. it good? Well, I liked it. I, I thought that it, it it followed kind of the same feel as as the other two movies. And, and I hadn't watched the Bogus Journey one in a while, and I watched that after I watched this with my kids, and was like, "Oh wow!" Like, there's some like un PC parts to this. The old ones completely. Yeah. Uh, so they cleaned all the PC stuff up in this one, so it had a little bit of that, which didn't quite ruin it for me because I I don't know I, it, it still kept the same kind of silly vibe to it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there was, there was this character in which he was like this, this robot. He was really funny in, in the movie. So uh, there was a few parts that really won me over, but it was just silly, lighthearted and something that's like, you know, if you want to get away from all the burning murder and mayhem, you know, go Is give it, it a shot. Yeah, so it's worth it. Yeah. All right. I'll, you So far, bro, you've been hitting hundred percent with your movie recommendations. So far. So you've been on I don't know. Yeah, so here's the thing. Adam's like, 50. You're 100. If, what? Yeah, you're 50, If you take dude. into I'm account the, the other Bill Ted's. No, no, no. You're 50%. <laughs> get, out, get out of here. No, 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 Get out of you here. You recommend sometimes. I'm like, this is not that What? Uh, uh, just in 100. You know why? You don't even watch the ones I recommend. I don't know what you're talking That's about. That's because you're 50%. We don't even. No, no, no. no. You, you're not That's even allowed to have nickname. this conversation. <laughs> Doug, Doug, I hope Doug will, uh, you will, will and, back you and me Doug up on match. this. You and Doug match. Yeah, you, you guys, because Doug, we Doug both is, have good taste. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank no, you, you Doug. No, Thank no, you, Doug. No. Here's what it is. Here's <laughs> what it is. I, Justin, has the same level of geekiness that I have when it comes to Okay, movies. so I will give you this. Yes. You, Justin, Justin's so he understands, weird, weird humor yeah. aligns better with your it's weird humor. It's not just that. It's yes. also that the nostalgia pieces, like when I watch, like for example, Cobra Kai, if I wasn't so nostalgic about Karate Kid. Oh yeah, you won't. I like would it. watch. I'd be like, this is not that well made. Yeah. But because I'm a geek about Karate Kid, the whole time I'm watching, I'm getting the chills and emotional. Yeah. You know see, I mean? see yeah. Doug, exactly. Doug and I, yeah. Doug and I have different <laughs> standards. Like I want like something that's well written. There's 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 great dialogue in it. There's great acting yeah, well, see, in it. I like that too, bro. Yeah. The, you know, sometimes you know it gets too dr dramatic. Percent. Get yeah. out of here uh, with that nonsense. 50, that fifty's not bad. Yeah. You can't. Hey, even... hold on, hold on, Justin. You also got felt a little emotional watching uh, Cobra Kai. Is that funny? Yes. <laughs> You know, that was such a part of my childhood. Yes. You know? It was crazy. Yes, when he gets the car, or he puts up the thing, and it's like Cobra Kai. Yeah, and then Mr. Miyagi, I mean, dude, that guy, Bro, I love that I guy. I give recommendations that anybody at any age could watch, and they're like, hey, that was a good flick, where you guys, you, if you did not watch Karate Kid, you're not liking Cobra Kai. Yeah, whatever. Man. Yeah. I don't care. Hands down. I'm just talking to the cool <laughs> people. Who everybody else, it, though? Everybody yeah. else listen to Adam. Yeah. Hey, so, so <laughs> did I tell you guys that we did one of those advanced uh, ultrasounds for the baby? You ever seen those the advanced? 3D ones? Have you done? Did you guys yeah, do one? Yeah, it's weird. <sighs> okay, I have think you, we did it. I'm yeah. not a fan of them. So yeah, we went. Weird. We went to do one because uh, now we we don't know what the gender of the baby is, or the sex of the baby, and uh, and that's because we want to be surprised or whatever. But you know, we were we haven't done really any ultrasounds that aren't necessary. But we were sitting around. I'm like, God, you want to do one of those 3D ones? Just see what the baby looks like. Mm. And she's like, Yeah, let's do it. So we booked one. And we go in there, and I tell the guy right away, I'm like, uh, we don't want to know the sex. Yeah, yeah, blur it out. Yeah, yeah just yeah. just don't <laughs> don't tell us the <laughs> don't tell us the sex of the baby, right? 
So we're looking. First of all, uh, my baby's adorable. That's uh, 100 percent objective. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. I have no bias. Okay, yeah. but just a very cute baby. If I say so myself. <laughs> but as he's going through and he's making comments about the baby, I think he let it slip. There was a comment that let it slip that I think it's a boy. Uh, what do you say? So he's going through the the in looking at the limbs of the baby, and he goes, "Wow!" He goes. Oh, look there at that. Go. He goes, no, no, hold on a second. Okay. He goes, I'll let you finish. I, yeah, I already see where this is going. He goes, uh, he goes, look at that calf. He goes, that's a, wow. He goes, look at those calves. Now, first of all, uh, one of the reasons why I married Jessica and had a baby with her is because she has amazing calves. Yeah. It's just, she's got incredible calf genetics, offsets mine a little bit. So there's hope. I was hoping for the same thing. For the future gener- Did she have nice yeah. calves too? <laughs> she's got great calves. She's getting yeah. great calves and legs. How's your boy's calf so uh, far? Yeah, so have you already far, analyzed his yeah, muscle? Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, saying so. like three legs. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. That's something. what I thought. Yeah. Wait, that's not a calf. I was, I was waiting for that. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. That's not a calf. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, that's how it happened. Yeah. So he's going through and he's like, oh, and he goes, wow, this is a, he's like, he's like, this is a cute baby, a very sturdy, cute baby. Now, you don't say sturdy about a girl. Ooh, sturdy. Yeah, nobody says sturdy. Mm. That's a compliment for a boy. Stoic like or if, sturdy. Yeah, if, you yeah. Were, if your little boy's walking around right now, and we were all sitting around, and I said, oh, man, Max, he's, he's built sturdy. You'd be, like, proud, right? Right. If it was a little girl, and I was like, man, your daughter's built sturdy. You'd be like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> it's like, hey, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right, she's sturdy. Yeah. <laughs> so he said sturdy about my baby, which mm. makes me think he's, it slipped that the male – a male ver- a word came out. Oh, At least I hope. <laughs> he said that about my daughter. <laughs> like, hey, man, what's yeah. wrong with you? I don't know. My sister's nickname was Tank. You know what I'm saying? That's not like a, a real feminine nickname <laughs> for awesome. sure. Was yeah. that? But it was that because she was just she yeah, was just she was a bulldozer, dude. Yeah. She would just she was a tank. I mean, she had she she had been in the hospital for stitches twice before the age of two. You know, so she was just bulldozed everything. Well, that's my different. My little niece is like that too. Yeah, yeah. Just, just like slamming everything. It's crazy jumping. when they're like. So she was like that. That was her nickname at one, two years old, and. It's crazy how you you can already get a glimpse of what they may be like as they get older. Because when she played sports, man, my sister was ejected for red cards. Like every, <laughs> really? Oh, she would just, awesome. oh, she played so physical, man. Yeah. And I remember my little brother is only a couple years younger. And I'm a good 10, 10, 13 years older than both of them. So I was always, you know, kicking the soccer ball around and teaching them. And when I would try and play physical with the both of them to teach them, you know, you got to use your body and try and show them how to be physical. Oh, my little brother would, you know, fall down and cry and didn't want to play that way. She would just give it right back to me. So you saw it even at a really young age, and she grew up to be 100% that. So it's interesting. That's and, awesome. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know. I mean, but I will say this. I was analyzing the muscle insertions because I was paying attention to the leg. And all. Wow. This kid's, gonna, see of course this did, kid's yeah. got long muscle bellies. Look at this <laughs> you know what I mean? Takes yeah. after their, you know, their mom. I have some, a few right. here and there, but, you know, not like uh, that lat spray. Not like yeah. the baby's yeah. mom. But, yeah, so I'm going to say it on the podcast so it's recorded. But I think he let it slip by saying the word sturdy. So I think it might be uh, a boy. We'll now, see. We'll are see you going to do the out, big yeah. reveal? Are you guys going to do like a party like that? What do you mean? When the baby's born? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you guys what's yeah. going on. You're not going to do like a big reveal with your family where you like, because you're going to find pink, out. you know, dust. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. No, because the baby's already born. That's right. the reveal, I feel like, is for the parents too, right? That's true. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's not. You guys that's, just sent him a picture of the baby's like. <laughs> Baby's you know, penis or vagina. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here, Here it is. Huh? Huh? Yeah. 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 Take face? a guess. Yeah. 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 Don't even say anything. I don't think I should have this. This yeah. is what we got, right? Yeah. yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited seeing the baby's little picture and, and the baby's got these really full lips. Boy, it came little- so fast. Dude, it's around the I corner, know, right? We're here a, already. It's around the corner. You know, I, I was always having like that. Another conversation I was having. So we have names, you know, like a, like a set of names that we really like. And, um, and so, you know, every name has its own nicknames, right? So I'm saying all the nicknames that go with the names. And Jessica's like, there's some nicknames that she's like, no, no one's going to say that to our kid. And I'm like, listen, honey, the way kids get nicknames, you have no control over. Yeah. A random person gives it and it sticks and that's it. That's your fucking nickname forever. Yes. She's trying to tell, I'm trying to explain this to her. She thinks she's like, no, I'm the mom and I'll make sure. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I say, especially if it's a boy. I'll lay the hammer. You, the nickname he'll have with his friends could be the worst nickname you've ever heard in your life. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to stick. There's nothing you can do so about it. So you guys have not nailed down one male, one female name. No, we have a, a few uh, that we like. So how the hell is that going to work? When the so so there were some compromises. Negotiating. Yeah, no, there were some compromises that had to be made because the names that I like the most are really Italian names, and for Jessica, she's like, God, that's so you know. To me, they sound like normal names. To her, she's like, I'm gonna have a, this little Italian kid right around. She's like, she likes them, but she's not sure. 
So the compromise was we pick some of the best ones that we like, and then it's up to her. So when the baby's born, she's going to decide what the name is based off of the baby with a way to look, and I'm happy with all the choices that we have. So, oh, okay, yeah. So, so you're oh, gonna, you're gonna, literally gonna wait to name until until it, it comes out. Yeah, just it'll come to come yeah. to us, you know, come oh, to her. Well, as soon this as, is it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the baby's well, born. interesting. Our deal was like the if it's a boy, it's I get to I get the last say on it. So we agreed, right? We did the same thing. We kind of narrowed it down to a handful of names, boys and girls, and then it, when we found out if it was a boy or a girl, if it was a girl. She gets the final say. What was your name for girl? Hmm. Or are you keeping that secret? Oh yeah, I'll okay. keep that secret until okay. until that happens, right? If that happens, so so we, I mean, we kind of gave ourselves the one year window, right? So yeah. if it happens in the, this next year, and she, re, so she just stopped breastfeeding, so she's just now back to having her period again. So really, even though they say she can get pregnant during that time, it's like the percent low chance, yeah, super low chances. So. Yeah. Literally, the clock has started right now for us. If we're gonna do, well, we gotta uh, hurry up and finish the podcast yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. hurry up and <laughs> trust. Did you now? Were there any names that she loved, but you're like, no, and <laughs> vice versa? Not really. Actually, I think that we both were. It was actually kind of crazy the how it all happened because we didn't talk very much about it. We knew that we were gonna be finding out about the sex soon, and so we said, hey, we need to come up with a handful of names, male or female. And we were driving, we had like a, we were driving, I think to my, back to my hometown or something. So we had like a two hour drive and uh, we just started throwing things out. You know, I, I, I did tell, I had some things that like, I was like, I wanted a, a powerful name, you know, that's I, for him. And she's like, she agreed. And then we went through a handful and then we would, we went through, like we started throwing out names and then we'd look, look up like the meaning behind it be like, oh yeah, that does that. I don't like the meaning yeah. of that. And so that was kind of like what would eliminate certain names. Um, and we nailed it down to, uh, a couple of them and that was just kind of, it was, we agreed that if it was a boy that I would have final say on it, if it was a girl, she'd have final say. And Maximus just was, it was so obvious to me with using Joseph as the middle name, like you, MJ would be, a, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I, you know, so I love, That's I love, cool. yeah, Michael Jordan. I love MJ as like a, as a nickname for him. I love Maximus. I love Max. Like so, it just it, it all flowed for me uh, for that. So that was a really oh no, easy we one. got in fights, dude. We got uh, in, this was a big deal. That was my brother in law and his oh, sister. Oh, dude, her and I were we'd get in arguments, fights that yeah. over names. You know what name she really liked? That definitely not ever. Definitely. And I, <laughs> if this is your name, okay, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, Abraham. Oh, yeah. She liked the name Abraham. I'm like, no, I'm not going to have, what am I going to have? A That's little really old school. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You had to ensure he gets yeah. picked on? Is that what you, you want? You got to have like an impressive yeah. beard. Especially if, he, especially if he takes after me, yeah. he'll be like annoying know-it-all in school, plus be named Abraham. Yeah. Yeah. The kid's going to get bullied Jefferson forever. Jefferson and Abraham, get over Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? yeah It's like, yeah, <laughs> what are we doing here? Yeah, like, yeah, no, with Courtney, it was weird. We actually like immediately agreed. It was Yeah, that's kind of. It, it was bizarre yeah. uh, because I thought for sure that was going to be one of those things. Like we hadn't had many fights. But I'm like, this is definitely going to be a fight. I'm sure. Like, I got to like figure out how this is going to work. And we just were going through and kind of we're, we're matching them to like middle names that were like carried on certain names that are in our families that uh, were similar mm -hmm. and then how they kind of flowed in terms of how you say it. And so we already knew like our, we had, we thought for sure, you know, uh, poor Everett like was going to be a girl. And so we had already named the girl name for that. And so uh, that was one of those. We, we combined our both of our grandmas. So we had Ava Jean. Uh, and it had a cool kind of 50s feel to mm -hmm. it, you know. Uh, but, uh, yes. Yeah, so and then we had to re, <laughs> re-figure it out and, like, start all over and figure out Everett's name. But we found, like, we try to find names that you don't hear a lot. Of course, Ethan's one of those you hear all the time now. Yeah. Like, everybody had the same idea <laughs> at the same time. Uh, it's weird how names get popular. Yeah. yeah. You know? No, it's really weird. It just resurfaces. There's a site you can look at. That's they, what I did. Yeah, you can look at like in night if born in this year, these are the most popular yep. names. Yeah, you can look at all. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. No, for uh, one of the one of the girl names that we like is a name that I always liked, and it's also a name that she always liked. Mm. That's the only name both of us were like, you know, really excited about. All the rest, man, it was. I'm telling you right now, it it's been like a I don't know five month uh, negotiating process oh, of wow. picking the names. Oh, I think wow. we're okay. We've got like three for the boy and uh, two for the girl that we like. Oh, yeah, the biggest fine. thing that we have contention with right now, and because the name was really easy, is uh, his haircut. So in Katrina's family, oh, wow. It is tradition that they they let the boy go four years before they they cut his wow. hair, and I'm like not happening. I'm like, there's no way. And I, and I I've been trying to like 
evaluate that. Like, why am I so hard up on that? Why? Like, it's not the jealous. (laughs) You know, (laughs) (laughs) fuck you. (laughs) I'm like, why? Why is it? Uh, You know, I I think, uh, yeah, it's I don't know. Maybe I'm a different guy right here. Right. So like, you know, girls like uh, they 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 uh, not this is sound sexist. Right. Okay. A lot of times. Here we go. Yeah, I know. Right. Let me me backpedal first before I put my foot (laughs) in my mouth here. It, you know, no, it's common, right? It's common that uh, many girls dream of their wedding. They dream of the white wedding. They dream yeah. of what, the location of it, the dress, everything, and yeah. they're like very adamant. That's not about sexist, it. right? Okay, so that, okay, so I just want to make sure it, you know who, okay. you never know who's gonna get offended for some shit like that. But uh, so for me, I always envisioned having a boy that like I got to dress, like I had to dress and style and like because as a kid growing up, I liked that stuff and there was a lot of things that I couldn't have or couldn't do. So you want his hairstyle to match his clothes? Yeah, all that. Like I want to I want to be able to I want to be able to you have able- Barbies when you were a kid? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I could so I guess it's different. It's weird. I guess m- many guys don't think about that. I thought about that. So I think that's what makes it so difficult for me to let it go and yeah. just be like let him grow his hair out and be like this mop on his head for four years. I'm like, ah, no. And I don't need to shave it or make it crazy. I just want to keep it lined up. And so he's coming up at that point where it's starting to, I love the way his hair falls and goes right now. And it's like, I want to keep it like that. I want to keep it cleaned up. Now, what are the roots of this tradition? And have they been doing it for generations? So all the boys, all the boys in our family have done that. That's mm, kind of just so what, this is like a really big deal for them. Yeah, it's kind of a it, this. So that's like a, the the biggest contention that we've had with Max is that um, is that they if you know the boys have let their hair grow out, and I know like her, and of course mom is like queen in the family, and like mom is like all about that. Like you know that's what I want to do, and I'm over here like mm, no, that's not happening. Like it's, I'm I'm taking my boy to get his haircut. Oh, I'm yeah. gonna do it. One I'd have a problem with it. Yeah, too, yeah. So, yeah. so it's, yeah. and I and I'll, and I'll win. That's it in the day. I'll win this. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. No. I'll Especially this after she hears this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, exactly. I, I hate to be that way, but it's like, and in my my uh, compromise on this, listen, when we have a second child, a daughter, and if it ends up being a boy, then I would flex on that. I'd be like, okay, okay, listen, you know, you allowed me to do that for my firstborn. If we end up having a boy for a second one, then I'd be more flexible about it. And no matter what, if it comes, if it's a girl for the second one, she can name it. She can cut the hair, however, mm-hmm. or not cut the hair, however she wants to. I would be okay with that. That's my thing. I get it because my family has certain traditions, and sometimes it's hard for Jessica to be like, "Well, why? <laughs> why?" Like for example, first birthday. In my family, first birthdays are big. You have everybody over. It's a big deal for her. She's like, "No, first birthday." It, the baby's so young. I just want it to be us, just to spend the time with. Yeah, the, yeah. So we, you know, we've compromised on some of that. So I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, no, I mean, I think Jess and I have a lot of a lot of stuff in common with the way we were raised and not having a lot of that stuff. And mm-hmm. it's you know, you these are things that are different. I'm the same way. Like, I was bummed out by Max's first birthday. You know, one, he'll never fucking remember, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm not like that big of a deal. But it, it was overwhelming for him. It was so many people. That makes sense. It's yeah. logical what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, there were so many people that I felt I was hosting a party, which is what I was doing. Yep. In and the, you know going around saying hi to family I haven't seen in a while, making sure everybody felt comfortable, and not really getting a chance to really like take in the moment with my son. And I, if I could do it over again, what I would have done to compromise, because that was really like Katrina. If it wasn't a Katrina, if it wasn't for COVID, we would have had a massive thing. And we still had a, a pretty big birthday party for him, considering if it was up to me now, what I wish we would have done is, and maybe this is something you and Jessica do, is I wish we would have first held our own little private thing, just our, mm-hmm. our family, me, her, him. We and our, did that. Yeah. And yeah, and like watched him take his first bite of his his cake mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm, and yeah. do all that, just her and I. And then we had like the big party with the whole family. Right, right, if, right. If I could go back and do it again, I would have preferred to have had like the best of both worlds, which is the intimate birthday party where her and I get to experience everything just with him and, and do that and then go to this big party. Because sure. then I would have cared less about it that... I was missing certain things that was going on with him during that day, and I could be entertaining, which is what I felt like I was doing the whole time. First question is from NAD7719. Can you please share your success stories of helping really overweight clients and how you help them? It is such a different journey than training athletes and people who just want to lose a few pounds. It, it uh, It is a very difficult task when you're dealing with somebody who has that kind of a relationship with food because, you know, when you're talking about uh, really overweight people, I consider, I would say, 60, 70 pounds plus overweight, right? The average person wants to lose weight with me was anywhere between 20 to 30 pounds. Once it got 60 to 100, 
Typically, you're dealing with someone that's been overweight for most of their life. Their relationship with food is a very difficult one to change because food to them, kind of like a drug, it's used to numb feelings or they've found comfort in it. Um, and so it's a difficult thing to change, a very, very difficult thing to change. The way I used to train people like uh, who were really overweight uh, was very different than the way I ended up training them later on in my career. Mm -hmm. The way I first started training them was, here's your meal plan. You got to get strict. You got to show up to the gym this many days a week. That's it. We're going to do it. We're going to low calorie, burn a lot of calories. All discipline based. All discipline based. All, you know, dropping the hammer. Yeah. And I was the motivating, <clears throat> hardcore, you know, take no bullshit uh, type of a trainer. And this was successful in the short term. I would get people to lose weight in the short term. I got none of them to keep it off. None of them to keep it off. And uh, it took me a while to really figure this out. And I remember the first time I actually figured this out. Um, I had a client who came and saw me who was 100 pounds overweight. And it, as I was – and I remember this because I was showing them around the, the facility – I sat him down, and they were visibly uncomfortable and shy. Okay, now this is kind of common with this kind of with this type of client, where you can feel that they're. I mean, think about it. They probably haven't worked out in a gym like you know ever, and they feel uncomfortable. They feel like they're being watched, like they don't fit in. But this was really the first time when I really felt it. Like I was really paying attention. I remember they were super uncomfortable. So then we sat down, and I thought I need to communicate to this person. A little bit differently because I can tell that they're intimidated by the weights and by other people working out. So we started talking about their goals and what got them to where they were. And, you know, I, I remember sitting there talking to, uh, to her and I thought, I'm going to change my approach. I'm going to change my approach. I'm going to, I'm going to, this time I'm going to, I'm going to be successful long term. And so I said, look, I said, here's the deal. I said, I've trained a lot of people in your situation and uh, I've had a lot of failures. And here's why. Now, what I'm the reason why I'm telling you this is not to motivate you to not be the failure. The reason why I'm telling you this is because we're not going to use that strategy. Here's what I want to do with you. I want you to come in, train with me. We'll figure out how many days a week is realistic for you to show up, and we're not even going to try to lose weight. I don't even let's not even talk about weight loss. I know you said that's your number one goal, but let's start with you coming in one day a week meeting with me and let's do that until this is something that you're not afraid of and you don't hate because she had told me that you know she was intimidated and she thought that was a great idea she hired me and we took this very slow approach we didn't talk about weight in fact i told her to not weigh herself uh i said if, you know i know maybe you thought you should weigh yourself to track your let's not do that at all I didn't tell her to take anything out of her diet what i did is i started adding things to her diet you know adam talks about this a lot himself. Um, and it was this kind of slow process. Here's what happened. Uh, the first year, um, she got stronger, improved her mobility, started to enjoy the way she felt, started to enjoy showing up at the gym. She got comfortable there because she would have conversations with me, conversations with the other clients that happened to work out at the same time. She became a staple in the facility. She came to the Christmas party that I had every year, talked to people. Everybody treated her amazingly. She lost no weight the first year. She just got stronger and felt better. This end of, towards the end of the second year, she on her own started to make changes to her diet. And she would come to me and say, okay, Sal, I'm ready. I think I want to make some changes. She's like, I've already eliminated soda. I remember she said that to me. I was like, oh my God, you already did it on your own. That's beautiful. Let's just stick with that for now. So by the end of the second year, she started to see some results. It was the third year that she started to lose the weight she lost all of it, and it never came back. In fact, uh, I still am friends with her on Facebook. And till this day, she's kept the weight off. So now we're talking, I don't know, 10 years later. She's kept it off. She's not one of those statistics, which is a majority of people, especially in that category, that fail. She did not fail. She has a very good relationship with exercise. I see her posting pictures of hiking. She likes to bake. She still bakes foods that she enjoys, but she's got this great relationship with exercise. That was the first time I was able to really piece together what, what gives people long-term So results. I, like you, same thing. For many years, um, I, I think I did a, a really bad job. And so the back half, I would say, or at least the last five years, 
of training clients, th this was actually uh, what I focused on. So I actually stopped training a lot of athletes. It would be a rare occasion, but and I actually really enjoyed uh, this type of client. And I think it was because I was very motivated to to figure this out because I didn't do such a good job mm. in in the early years. And I think what made me realize uh, where I went wrong, and and, and it's, this person did a great job asking this question because they they compare it to like training athletes, why it's so different. And you're right. The journey is completely different, and they're at a different place. So, the irony of that is that as a as a young or immature trainer, you you sometimes approach almost every client the same way. Here's your meal plan. How many days a week can you commit to? You know, and you write a good workout, right? And then you train them hard, and you try and you motivate them mm -hmm. to be consistent. And the truth is that everybody is at a different place and their journey and a good trainer will learn how to meet that person where they're currently at. And I just, that, that light bulb didn't go off for me till way later on in my career. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so funny when you think about it though, it's so obvious. It's like, you wouldn't treat somebody learning a language that way. You wouldn't treat it. You wouldn't treat an athlete even yeah. that way. And I just going to throw them in the game without the training. Exactly. You, and, and if they're, if this is, if you're somebody who's really, really overweight, it's more than just a, a calories in, calories out thing. It, there's a, a relationship that you've established with food. There's a, a lack or a relationship that you've de dealt with with exercise and movement. Mm -hmm. It's there's there's a, a a lot of things that are that have came into play that have got us in the place that we are. And so I want to slowly start to unravel all of that versus like here throwing it all at them. Just like I was using the example of learning a language. If you've got somebody who has no clue about anything, and you all of a sudden start speaking to them in that other language, it's going to be really tough for that person. Maybe some people start to pick things up, and they might learn or see some results that way, but it's going to be really hard to get it to stick like what Sal was saying. And so it really was about learning where they're at and then setting very small, realistic, obtainable goals that then, then could become part of their lifestyle. And one of those things is – you know, if they came in and said, I could commit to three or four days a week of training, absolutely. I didn't want them to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, like Sal said, oh, I just, you know, let's just start with one day a week or two days a week, something that you know that you can stick to. Uh, this is also where I started to add things to the diet. Um, many times when I would get clients like this, um, it would be somebody who you would think was eating McDonald's four or five times a day and a ton of calories and just sitting on the couch watching TV. That wasn't the case. Many times these these clients had already yo-yo dieted so many times their metabolism was extremely slow and they were eating only 1,300 or 1,500 calories of like nothing. And so it was like I would look at them and I'd be like, wow, they're this much overweight. They're only consuming this much. They've really slowed their metabolism down. I definitely can't take this person and tell them to eat less than what they're already eating. So I needed to add food. So and and like what Sal said, I would not uh, I would not focus on weight loss. That's not let, right. It's all about making good habits in your life right now. And let's start with one or two at a time and slowly build on that. And I and after I would build on it, I would want them to stay consistent with it for a couple months before I even thought about adding something else or taking anything else away because I and I really wanted them to be the one to like be begging for it. Like Adam, I'm like this is. I haven't missed a day on this. It's going great. I feel good. Yeah. What else can I do? Okay, mm -hmm. now we're ready for the next thing to focus on. And that's just it. I think that we all when you when you get in that situation, there's normally something that triggers them to to come in that day and hire the trainer or start on their fitness journey and they're 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 highly motivated because of emotions. Mm -hmm. Either something set them off to trigger them to come in and finally do that and make a change or a biggest loser show they just watched or something or went to the doctor and found out they have a health issue and so all of a sudden they're 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 making a decision based off of emotions. They're they're emotionally they're all they're emotionally fired up and they want to make a change. And a lot of times just like in any other aspect of our life when we respond emotionally all the time, it's not the most logical approach to doing things. And so as a coach and as a trainer, I had to really watch that and, and then help them understand that, listen, I, I feel you and I understand what you want, but th this will be a better strategy. And then explaining to them to, to set small goals, let's hit that out the park before we, we add any more to it. Yeah, and this may sound a bit redundant because I definitely went through the same experience and came to the same conclusion uh, as you both did uh, with with training, you know, these people to add to that uh, as far as when when somebody comes in with this type of 
uh, urgency and, and emotion and they're driven and they really, you could tell they really care about themselves now more than ever. Uh, it, this is really what drives a lot of personal trainers and health professionals into their field. They, they want to match that emotion. They want to match that urgency and they want to, they, they, they want that same result as their client. Like I, I felt passionate about trying to get them to that place. And, and I wanted to be a part of that, like so bad that, it, you know, it was misplaced energy that I was putting mm -hmm. in my initial clients where I was so focused on, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Uh, and it really took a lot of time and, and people that I've trained to realize, you know, this, this sort of conundrum where, uh, much like when you're you're given to a charitable organization where you go in somewhere else where you realize that just giving people things isn't the solution. Like this isn't what's really going to help them long term. They really have to own it themselves and build themselves uh, from within. But how do I how do I be a part of that and be around that and provide them with the necessary things to make that happen? And, uh, you know, for me, that was the lesson, the lesson that I, I am just here as, you know, like a vessel. I'm here to, to be able to provide what's necessary in whatever stage you're at. So I had to listen a lot more. I had to ask more questions. And that was like what I had to learn as a trainer uh, was what, what are the needs right now? More so than what you need to do. What you need to do is this. Like, I'm not driving the ship you're driving it. What do you need from me? You know, and to ask those kind of questions more was, uh, you know, I got a totally different result. Oh, totally. And you, really it was for, you know, it, what it became for me about creating a new relationship first with exercise, a good one. And then later on one with food, which is why when they show up to the gym, it was, it, it turned into something they really enjoyed coming to. They enjoyed coming to it, not because of the hard, crazy workouts. Sometimes we'd have those, but really because it was a place where everybody was cool with them. Hey, how do you feel today? Oh, you're really tired. All right, today we're going to do things that are going to help relieve stress. Sometimes I would take this woman on a walk. Yeah. She would show up and she'd be like, oh man, I had, you know, got terrible sleep. I've been mm -hmm. really whatever. But like, you know what? Um, instead of working out in here, let's just go for a 45 minute walk. Or, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm just going to stretch you out. You look like you're a little tight. We're not going to do anything with resistance. I'm just going to stress you out. So I stretch you out. So this person showed up when they felt bad. That's what you want. Yeah. What you want is you want a client. You okay? A client who call who shows up when they feel great and weren't ready to work out. Okay, congratulations. You did nothing. That's easy. You want your clients to show up when they don't feel like showing up. When they feel bad. If your client calls you and says, "Hey, man, I feel really terrible. Can I come in and see you today?" Then you know you're doing a good job. Next question is from Booker T. Creatine for women, yay or nay? Yay. Oh, yeah. Yay. Yeah, let's see. Do you want uh, better health, uh, better cognitive function, uh, healthier mitochondria? Do you want to get a little bit stronger? Yes. Do you want to speed up your metabolism? Do you want to be able to burn body fat a little bit more effectively indirectly through a faster metabolism? Why is this a question, though? This Is, is it because the water retention that everybody thinks that it's, that it's a bad thing? Because when you take creatine, you are going to gain you know, one to three pounds on the scale, depending on how much muscle mass you have. Because of that, uh, some women are like, oh no, a pound of, of extra weight on the scale. Yeah, and then to your muscle bellies. Yes. Right. And then when you explain it's it to them, oh, it's fluid. Yeah. And when you say it's just water, they get even more freaked out because they, because they think it's bloat. Yeah. Bloat is not the same. Bloat is water outside of the muscle. Water inside the muscle just makes your muscles look more defined. Yeah. It just makes your muscles feel tighter. That's what happens when you take creatine. There is no supplement at all. Any, there is no supplement that I recommend more than creatine. Creatine, I recommend to my grandmother and grandfather. I recommend to my parents. Uh, it's good if you work out or if you don't work out. It's good for your health. It helps with heart health and cognitive function. You're going to start to see creatine. Yeah. It's the crossover from performance into wellness. It's interesting. It's a great, it's a great supplement for everybody. Now you, of course, if you have to have good, healthy body, if you have, you know, kidney issues or other issues, you might want to check with your doctor. Otherwise it's a great supplement to take. And there's nothing that is as proven as safe or effective as creatine. There's literally, it's actually the most studied supplement there is. There's, I don't know, thousands yeah. 
of studies on creatine that show its uh, its benefit both long term and short term, and uh, it's it's one of those weird supplements that's great for performance but also great for wellness. You know, it's like it's going to help. I want to make it clear though that like, you don't have to take it either. No. Right, you don't. No, you don't you, have to. You do not have to take this because there's that that other camp that everybody thinks that you have to take it. Like you don't have to at all. I just think it, if there's a supplement that uh, we were ever to uh, recommend to people, it's I've recommended creatine more to people than it, probably any other supplement. And what's funny about this whole thing that you know for women or whatever is the the clients that loved creatine the most ended up being my female clients mm -hmm. because they would take the creatine. They get here's what happens when you take creatine, right? For for a lot of people, you take it, and it takes about a week or two before you get uh, saturation levels in your muscle, and you can expect to gain one to three reps on every exercise or five pounds on 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 a lot of your lifts, just like that in two weeks. You're just stronger. Um, and my female clients loved it, mm -hmm. like they just they lift and be like, oh my god, I'm so much stronger. I feel so much better. And I'd say, did your weight go up? Sometimes it went up a pound. Sometimes it didn't go up at all. But they all noticed the definition. So they'd say, man, my arms look a little bit more defined. Or, you know, I feel a little tighter in my legs. Um, and that was from the creatine. So it's it's one of those supplements that uh, – here, here's what you're going to end up seeing. You're going to see creatine. Uh, you're already starting to see this, but it's going to get real popular. In wellness supplements, uh, hospitals are going to start giving uh, creatine to uh, a lot of their patients. You're going to start to see this being included in supplements that are typically tar for to that target advanced age population, like those insure drinks or whatever. You're going to start to see creatine. I know they include HMB in them now, which is, there's no comparison. Hmm. So yes, male, female, you want to burn body fat, you want to build muscle or just improve your health. Definitely give creatine a try. Um, again, you don't have to take it, like Adam said. You don't think you have to. I don't think you have to take any supplement if you have a good diet. But you'll notice you'll probably notice some benefits from creatine. Next question is from X Rice Ball X. What is your go-to thing for dealing with anxiety from simple overstimulation or something more major that life throws at you, like Justin's evacuation? This is a big thing right now. Yeah. Have you have you guys seen the articles like how, how much uh, anxiety and mental uh, illness is going up? It's everywhere. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not just my situation. Obviously, this is everybody's dealing with this on another level. I think right now than ever before. Um, but uh, to be honest, I could I could sit here and talk about meditation and breathing and all these kind of biohacks and all that shit. But to be honest, for me, it's been all gratitude and humor like that that really has been like carrying me through a lot of uh what what obstacles and what crazy is sort of presenting it in, in front of me is really to take that time out to um reflect on things that are going well uh, that on things that I do have on uh you know a life that I do want to live and and so like for me gratitude is just it, it's a practice that I think a lot of people, it sounds so basic and simple, but I think a lot of people don't recognize the power of it. Uh, if you really, you know, set your mind on more of those things, like it's amazing what starts to kind of appear in front of you uh, as you're focusing mm. uh, exclusively on, on those things and not just consuming. It's really about the consumption uh, that you need to assess, like where you're, you're flooding your mind uh, that's making you ha like it's creating all this anxiety. Well, I think the first step of overcoming anxiety is is recognizing that it's self inflicted, um, which you know, I, and I don't know if it's this generation or this time that we're going through right now, but a lot of this is like we're always pointing at the things that are happening to us, but it's us who allows ourselves to feel anxious over all this stuff, and mm -hmm. you know, so my answer to that is to reframe it. Um, in every, uh, every obstacle that we have, every challenge, every hardship, there's an opportunity there. There's an opportunity for growth. There's an opportunity for you to learn. There's an opportunity for you to refocus. I mean, I think Justin made the, uh, the point of trying to make, um, lemonade out of the lemons that he was given the last couple of weeks. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that's what you, ha you have to look at this is like, okay, because of what's going on, that's causing you quote unquote, you know, cause nothing else is causing you, causing yourself to be anxious over it. Where are the op where do the opportunities lie to improve? Now let's use Justin's as an example. 
Uh, and I don't know if this was going through his head or not, but you know, all, you you get evacuated from your home. This is a uh, a scary, sad time, and l- probably a lot of emotions going around. But it's also a time that your your family's all brought together. You guys are, and it also can bring perspective of like these things that we put so much value in, like a home and, and items and stuff like that, really mean nothing if we if if we don't have each other, right? And so, and that's kind of like to his point about gratitude mm-hmm. is. It's really reframing uh, where your values are and what's important to you and the opportunities that are are there. Now we have this time together that we could focus on each other. And now I bet you when he came back to his house, he had a whole different feeling mm-hmm. uh, because of it. And mm-hmm. so, you know, and, th- and that's just it. When you when the, the one of the best things, too, that I, I learned going through adversity was when I got to the other side of it, those were some of the best times. So if I'm feeling anxious or having anxiety and I feel stressed or I'm going through a hardship, one of the things I always remember is that, man, it's hard right now. But when I get to the other side of that, um, it, th- those are always the best times. And so I just got to get through this. And so if that means you know, meditating or using positive affirmation or reframing your situation, uh, th- that's up to the individual on what works best for you. But just remember that something like anxiety is is self-inflicted. This is something that you are internalizing. You're allowing something else that's external, that's happening around you, to uh, affect you internally. You're giving up your power. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you have the ability to, to stop it in its tracks and look at its opportunity. And now I have a, re- a religious background, and so there's the part of me, like, I, I always kind of like, if it's really, really bad, I kind of chuckle and I look up in the sky and I'm like, what are you trying to tell me? Right. What you know? do I need to learn? Yeah. Right what now? am I, what <laughs> am I supposed to learn right now? What is the lesson here? Right. Like, so, and if you're not spiritual and you have other practices that, that you practice to do that, then, you know, so be it. That's my own. Like that's, I always feel like there's a lesson in everything that I'm going through and I'm always looking for it. Of course I'm human. So initially when it hits me, it hurts, it freaks me out, I get scared, all the emotions are swirling around. But once I take a deep breath and realize that it's not the end of the world, I still have my health, I'm still here, my family's still here, okay, this is a shitty situation, Um, what part of this situation can I control, what can I own, and what can I learn from it, and and reframe it and get through it, because on the other side of it, it's better. Yeah, it's so the way I look at it is there's there's kind of two aspects of uh, anxiety that you want to look at. There's the physical feeling of anxiety, and then there's the mental uh, anxiety. And they typically go hand in hand, and and one can cause the other, right? So you can think about things that make you anxious, and that causes a physical response. The faster heart rate, the dry mouth, the the clammy hands, uh, you know, feeling a little bit dizzy sometimes or whatever. That can happen physically. Or you can get physical anxiety uh, those same symptoms, which then make you freak out because you feel crappy or you feel a particular way. So the reason why I'm saying that is because I want to address the physical anxiety first. Physical anxiety can come from poor health. Okay, This is why exercise and diet has been shown to be extremely effective for many, many people with anxiety. If you have poor health, if you have a nutrient deficiency, your diet's not working for you, you have poor sleep, and you're not active, you could, you're, literally your body could be producing uh, hormones that make you feel uh, anxious, chemicals that make you feel anxious. It's like your body, your health is poor and your body's sending out these signals. And so it's like when you have a dog and you keep your dog in a crate all day long and then you let them out and they chew up the furniture and stuff, it's like energy that needs to come out. So if you have physical anxiety and you can't figure out why the hell am I getting this anxious reaction, everything seems to be okay. This is what's happening to a lot of people right now. Mm. They're like, well, you know, I still have my job. Everything's okay. Why the hell am I getting this anxiety out of nowhere? Exercise, diet, and sleep can can be tremendously valuable for physical uh, anxiety. Mm-hmm. Now the mental. Let's talk about the mental anxiety. Um, nothing has been shown to be as effective as a spiritual practice. Spiritual practices, and it could be philosophical like Stoicism. It could be religious like Christianity. Uh, it could be Eastern with meditation. But those practices, a lot of their value is in exactly what Adam and Justin are talking about, which which have to do with reframing things and gratitude and eventually letting go of the things um, that you can't control. So those are the two those are the two ways I handle my anxiety. Uh, exercise, for me, is the best cure for physical anxiety ever. If I'm ever super stressed out and I feel that anxious physical feeling and I go work out, 
man, my body's chill afterwards. I don't got that physical feeling of anxiety more. Now, if my mind is still racing, that's when I turn to things like prayer Mm -hmm. and gratitude and I start to leave things that I don't, I can't control and I start to be okay, become okay with whatever happens, right? Um, So those are the ways that I tend to handle it. And I think both of those are the approaches that most people need to take. I don't think one tends to solve all of it. Um, I think both tend to be the solution. Next question is from Tiffy Leap. As a trainer, how do you keep yourself from getting burnt out, especially emotionally? Oh, well, that's that, you know, this is a good question because this happens. If you're a trainer and you're so married to your client's results and you're so married to the fact that your clients got to do what you say, you're going to be screwed. Yeah, because ha- more than half the time you'll fail. The, the cli- <laughs> clients, a fact. they're not going to do what you want yeah. all the time. Sometimes they're going to work out half-ass or they're going to cancel or they're going to do what you tell them and then they're not going to do what you tell them and it's going to happen a hundred times over and over again and you're going to want to get to the point where you're going to be like, I actually, I used to get trainers tell me this all the time and it used to make me laugh. They come up to me like, I want to fire my client. I'm like, okay, yeah. well, why? Why do you want to fire your client? Because they just, you know, they do the meal plan and then they don't. Or they tell it and then they don't. They're not taking this seriously. I only train serious people. I'm like, yeah. okay. I've told them the same thing like a hundred times. Yeah. I'm like, like yeah. you need- Welcome to the club. Yeah, you need to relax. First of all, you're not going to help them by firing them. Now, there's, of course, clients, if they no-show, you, and then you need to respect your time, that's totally different. But if they're showing up to their workouts, that's one big step that they're doing. And so you need to chill out with the whole, I'm going to fire my clients if they don't- take me seriously because I only t- train serious clients. Like that's, it's uh, silly. It's, it's like pretentious. You will, you will burn yourself out if you have that attitude. So number one, be okay. It's their goals and their life. And you're the guide. You help them, but they make the choices. You have to be okay with the choices that they make. Here's the second part. This, this one was a big one. Um, if you don't really love people and enjoy talking to people and enjoy hearing their stories and love hearing about their lives and asking them questions, you're gonna have a tough time as a personal trainer. Because you're going to be training, if you're successful, six to eight people a day. So that's six to eight hours uninterrupted. You're on working with someone. And if you can't deal with different personalities, different stories, different stresses, because they're going to tell you about their husband and their wife and their job and their kids. They're going to tell you about why they don't want to do this, why they do want to do this, how they feel. If you don't love people so much that you don't find that entertaining – um, it, it's going to suck to show up to work because oh, you're, yeah. you're going to have to hear all this stuff and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to hear so-and-so. You're going to get vested in each one of them. Yes. And, and I, I went through a period of this and it mainly it was because I was stacking so many clients back to back to back to back. And I was just in, in the zone of I'm going to just get as many in as possible, many reps as I can. You know, I'm going to try my best to make a, a career out of this. And so I was I was just focused on trying to get – uh, you know, the work in when I could. And that's when I started, when, when you start to build this feeling of, uh, you know, feeling burnt out, you got to kind of reassess now. Okay. Uh, like how, if you've done your time and this is something that you're doing, you might want to reevaluate your business plan. And so that's something that I went through and started to start to think about how I could provide better service. Cause if I'm feeling burnt out, I'm that's going to be a reflection mm-hmm. of what I'm bringing in now to each one of my clients and my service is going to drop on some level. And so I had to, I had to really recognize that and, and sort of like restructure the whole thing to where it allowed for op- more opportunity uh, for free time for me, which is important. You have to think about yourself too. Uh, to get my workouts in, to just have moments where I could think and and plan and uh, think about my business outside my business. Uh, and so that meant a, a reduction in clients. But now to survive, I need to bring my rates up a bit. And so there's that whole process of sort of changing and altering uh, your business plan and, and gear it more towards what's going to benefit your lifestyle. No, that's uh, a good most. point. And I also used to love uh, the conversations that we would have. And I would look forward to learning from the clients that I trained all the time. And so they would come in and I think to myself, what can I learn from so-and-so? Oh, he's been in business for 20 years and he's successful. I'm going to ask him a bunch of business. Oh, that's a doctor. Yeah, they're mentors I'm to you. That's oh, how I looked at it. I used to love it. They come in and I used to feel guilty sometimes. Even when I trained them and stuff, I'd be like, man, I just learned a ton in that hour yeah. talking to so-and-so about investment or talking to so-and-so about this particular surgical procedure that I'd never heard of before or whatever. 
Um, so and that made it just fun. When everything they show up, I'm like, oh my god, I can't yeah, wait have to, to ask have them. Fun. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad Justin, you went the direction you did because I I have a different opinion I think than Sal does on this, and that's uh, I would take ownership as this is this is my cue to myself. I need to be a better business operator. Um, if I'm getting burnt out and I'm dealing with a lot of these clients that I don't like to train, we you, there's a massive pool of people that you you, we, you can reach. Um, we are we are fishing in a huge sea of all different types of clients. And if I like a certain client, but then I find myself I keep getting these clients that are making me feel burnt out, then I need to be a better business operator and attract the people that I want to train. And so this was my mo because this happened to me. I definitely like got uh, burnt out, and the burnt out feeling was that of frustration. Because the truth is, you know, uh, being a good trainer is a lot like being a good baseball player. Uh, you're, you know, uh, the, the greatest baseball player still bat under 500. I mean, you're. It's just statistically speaking, you're not going to get all of your clients' results. That's just part of it. But if you want to attract more people that are serious about the results, that are consistent with the things that you're telling them and work with just them, then you got to get to a place uh, where you have so much demand as a, a trainer that you can turn away all the people that, that are That's the important point because yeah. the complainers were the trainers that didn't have that. That's right. They mm -hmm. didn't, they, and I'm like, you have, you can't be picky and choosy. That's right. Because you're looking for more clients. Exactly. Yeah. So get to a place where you can say no. You know, and, and then once you get to that place, you start to learn. I mean, obviously, you've been doing this for a long time. I can sit down for an hour. I, and to this day, I get people offering me ridiculous money to train them and turn and, and turn it down because it's not worth my time because I already know what kind of person they're going to be just by having a conversation yeah. 45 minutes to an hour in. So even though the dollar amount may sound appealing to me, I care also about my mental health and not feeling burnt out. So I don't want somebody who is going to pay my bill, but then I'm going to be constantly having to text and remind, and they're going to give me excuses every time, and they're not going to. Those are my th these people are your your walking billboard. So I want all my clients to see phenomenal results and sing my praises because I've changed their life. But they got to be ready to want to change, and so I would I would build my business to a place where. I can only take. I want to take on the people that I know are really ready to change. Not just the people that are willing to spend the money. There's a lot of people that are in a place financially that they 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 know that they can afford a personal trainer and it's the cool hip thing to do. Or they know, oh, I don't know a lot about that, so I'll just hire somebody. But they haven't made the 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 commitment to themselves to actually change their behaviors. And if those are the people that I want to help out, and I needed to get to a place where I could turn down all the other clients and for for these reasons exactly not because like oh I'm a dick and I can't I I couldn't find a way to help that person no it, it can become very exhausting when you're training 6 to 8 hours back to back to back to clients and more than 50% of them are half assing their their attempt to get to their fitness goals so okay I need to get better at my as an operator and get my level of training up to where there's a high enough demand for me that I can start to be a little more picky and choosy about the clients that I decide to help out are the ones that are already in that place where they want to help themselves. And boy, did that make a huge difference in me feeling burnt out because I, I still to this day, and that's why I still will always have one or two clients I'm helping, is I, st I love to help somebody who is ready to help themselves. Yeah, That is looking just for guidance. That it's just like, Adam, I need. To, I don't. I don't go to school for all this. I didn't learn all this. All this stuff, and I respect your opinion on it. I just need you to kind of guide me. Mm -hmm. Tell me this. Tell me that. And I'll execute. I'll follow. I'll learn. I'm eager to learn. I love helping someone out like that. It's still very rewarding for me. So, get to a place with your business that you have that opportunity to say no to somebody who's not ready yet, and say yes to all the people that are ready to make that change. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find the four of us on Instagram. Now, you can find Doug at Mind Pump Doug, and he does a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff, so if you want to learn about podcasting and what happens when we turn off the cameras and the mics, shh, make sure you follow Doug. And then you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. What would the conversation look like to this client? Since this is, I think, one of the most common things I ever, at least I remember getting, which is the, I want to lose five or 10 pounds, or I want a flat tummy, but I also want to build yeah. my butt. How do you guys start that conversation with that client? Oh, easy. Uh, we're going to start with the building first. Here's why. Okay. If, if we start with the building first,